Welcome to another Canvas Update video tutorial. In this session, we will explore the new Control Traits feature, which allows us to generate images with transposed compositions and human poses from a reference image. Let's dive in and see what this is all about. This feature is available in both the Board and Canvas Editor. Although this video is demonstrated in the Canvas Editor, the functionality is the same. The Control Traits feature is located at the bottom of the left side panel, below the Exclude from Image feature. In the Control Traits feature, you can add up to three control traits by clicking the Add Control button. When you click on it, a window will appear where you can upload your reference image from your computer or simply drag an image into it. Below that, there is a drop-down list with the three possible control traits, Edge, Depth, and Pose. Additionally, there is a control weight slider that determines the extent to which the traits of the reference image are transposed to the final result. By default, the control weight slider is set to a value that generally produces good results. However, depending on the desired output and the reference image you're using, you may need to make adjustments to achieve the desired effect. Experimenting with different control weight values can help fine-tune the transposition of the traits from the reference image to the final result. The way you add control traits doesn't affect the final result of the generated image. Instead, it's the control weight assigned to each control that determines the dominance of the respective trait in the transposition process. A higher control weight for a particular control will result in that trait being more prominently transposed to the generated image. As mentioned earlier, there are three types of control traits, and the first one is the edge trait. This trait focuses on capturing the contours of an image, regardless of its type, whether it's a simple sketch, a 3D image, or a photograph. It doesn't consider depth information, but is excellent for precisely defining the shapes and outlines of the intended composition. By using the edge trait, you can provide guidance to the generator and let it work its magic in filling in the remaining details. The second control trait is the depth trait. Unlike the edge trait, the depth trait focuses on extracting depth and volume information from the reference image. It generates grayscale images where lighter tones represent objects in the foreground and darker tones represent objects in the background relative to the viewer. For the depth trait, it is best to use 3D images or photographs that have well-defined lighting and shadows, as these elements can be easily translated into depth and volume. If the reference image has a strong sense of volume, it can also be a good candidate for establishing the contours of the desired composition. And finally, we have the pose control trait. This trait is specifically designed for human figures. It generates a stick figure pose, including the head and hands, based on the reference image. The pose control trait does not capture information about contours, depth, or volume. It is primarily used to create human poses for your generated images. It is important to note that it does not work well with single hands or arms without a hand, but it works effectively with faces. So let's take a quick workflow on how to use these three control traits. First, click the Add Control button and upload a reference image. Then, select your desired trait. We will go through them one by one. Let's keep the control weight at its default value for now. Add a prompt and click Generate. Keep in mind that when using control traits, most of the new filters are disabled due to the way they were trained. You can pull out your fancy prompts and use the Playground V1 model, that is the default model in Canvas, or use the available filters when generating images with this feature. As you could see, using control traits is very straightforward. While these images can be considered finished with the use of a proper prompt, I prefer to use control traits as reference image maker. 
This way I use them in image to image to apply my preferred filters that work well with simple prompts. Let's quickly apply the revanimated filter to enhance the final image as desired. And there you have it. With control traits, we now have more control over our compositions. Don't miss the future videos where we explore creative ways to use control traits. See you in the next one.